Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding that we all make mistakes, but it's what we do after that ultimately dictates who you are and who you will become. The truth is we all go through life with our own share of failures. Whether it's professionally or personally, we've all had experiences where we made the wrong decision and wish we could do things better. Failures and mistakes are simply a part of life. But what builds character and dictates what type of person we become ultimately boils down to one thing. What we do when we fail and how we handle our mistakes. The easiest thing to do is to stay down when we fail or to be oblivious to our mistakes. But the people who grow into the best version of themselves and pursue greatness are the ones that rise above their mistakes and failures. They aren't afraid to apologize if they hurt someone, get back up after failing miserably, or be open to changing for the better. As Sebastian Richard quotes, leadership is all about making the jump, taking risks, and learning from your mistakes. It's all about failing, dusting yourself up, and getting back up again and again. As Sebastian Richard quotes, leadership is all about making the jump, taking risks, and learning from your mistakes. It's about falling, dusting ourselves off, and getting back up again and again. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, I did see on Instagram that g Easy and Demi Lovato showed some love for you guys. So let's talk about that. How does it feel? Because I'm sure this has been a very lengthy process getting a show on Netflix, right? <laughs> oh, for sure. And Netflix has been a huge platform for us and they've been a great partner. And, and like you said, honestly, I was hoping the show was gonna do good, but I didn't expect the buzz and the press that we've been getting. We were the number two most popular unscripted show in the world last week. Like you said, Jeezy, Demi Lovato, Jimmy Allen, Lanco, a lot of different celebrities um, and athletes are watching the show and commenting on the show. And so for us, obviously it helps give us um, a, a good kind of pat on the back that what we did uh, is a good series because we really felt good about it. But when you start getting, you know, a wide audience watching the show and then you start getting celebrities reaching out to us, DMing us, and also posting about the show, the, the response has been far more than we ever imagined. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Jason Shavigo, the producer and director of the new Netflix show, Title Town High. Jason, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. I'm really excited to talk to you. There's so much to talk about. Before we get into it, let's talk about how you got your start. I heard that you got into sports entertainment in college. So tell us about that. I did. I went to Florida State University and uh, majored in communications. Um, and so had a great, obviously, education there. And because Florida State was so good as far as a football school, ABC Sports would come and do different events at our at our school. And so. By doing that, I kind of started getting into the live events and live sports and ended up getting hired on by ABC Sports when I was still in college. And I was actually, they flew me out on Thursdays to go do college football games all over the country and then ended up moving to New York, uh, taking a job with ABC Sports and working on college football, Monday night football, uh, things like that. And then um, through my career, just kind of from there, uh, there was the XFL that started up, which was a new football league that was Vince McMahon and Dick Eversall started and went to go work on the XFL. And then when that fell through, um, we actually are, um, I actually got asked to come work for WWE and so started producing all their backstage segments. And that's really was my kind of start of taking sports and entertainment and trying to mix and really learning how to tell stories. I, I learned a lot working at WWE and I, I think that's something that's really benefited my career. Mm -hmm. I love that. I went to school for journalism as well. And I feel like all those experiences that I had, it definitely shapes you into, you know, who you become in this industry. So let's talk about, you know, how do you feel that these experiences shaped you into the storyteller you are today? I think for me, uh, doing these kind of docu-reality series, it's just based around real life. And so for me, especially in sports, I play sports, so I got an idea of kind of what that was like to be on the other side. And and for me, telling stories has always been such a big part of kind of who I am and what I really enjoy doing. And so for me, having the opportunity to tell these stories, and obviously I'm a huge sports fan, so being able to use sports to help tell the stories has just been a great experience. Mm -hmm. 
What was your first major big break in the industry that you recall and you learned the most from? Oh, I think Two Days. Um, two Days was a series that was on MTV and it's a funny story because I actually sold Two Days when I was 24 years old to MTV and MTV had no idea how old I was and we sell the show, we're starting to do production. The vice president of MTV comes down to Hoover, Alabama. We go to dinner and I had ordered a drink and they asked for my ID and I had, I needed to use the restroom. So I went to the restroom. When I came back, the waiter had taken my ID and put it on the table. And when I came back, the vice president over at MTV, her name was Amy Bailey, was white as a ghost. She looked at me and she's like, you're 24 years old. I just gave millions of dollars to produce the show to a 24 year old kid. And um, obviously it turned out uh, for the better. It became MTV's number one series, but I was I was really young and, and got a really early break and uh, was very fortunate to have a show that had the success like two days. Yeah, and you've had so many epic experiences. I mean, ABC, you know, producing shows. So, you know, what have those experiences taught you about this industry? Well, I'll tell you this is to never give up, especially when it comes to shows and pitching shows and trying to get shows on the air. Um, you're going to get 10 no's for every one yes. And it's just kind of the nature of the business. And uh, for me, and not to sound like the you know typical cliche, but if you work hard enough and you continue to push in something you believe in, then I think there's great opportunities. Look, Titletown High was a show that wasn't an easy sell right away. We had to show a lot and shoot a lot and and show different networks and ended up coming down. There was three networks that that was interested in it. But this is a this is a, a business, as you know, that's not easy. Um, and, and you definitely have to have thick skin and, and you got to be willing to, to push the limits. Yeah, absolutely. You know, getting into this industry is definitely not easy because it is so saturated uh, and there's so many people that want to get into it. So, of course, people see your success. But, you know, what are some obstacles that you face in the industry when you first got in and how did you kind of push through and get through that? Well, for me, like I told you before, I was so young and that was kind of a huge hurdle easy. Um, I didn't have a ton of experience, but I had a hit series under my belt with two days and that really helped me kind of in the deals to come. But I, I think some of the struggles is always getting to see, getting these network executives to see the vision that you have for a series. And at networks and platforms now, they're looking for the next big hit. And they're also at the same time scared to not pick up the next big hit and somebody else get it. And so just overcoming obstacles when it comes to kind of pitching and trying to explain your ideas for them to give you a chance, because at the end of the day, they have to take a chance on you. And I think these networks and platforms now, they're really becoming smart and they're investing more into the producers and the directors knowing what type of programs they can do. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely challenging pitching your show. I remember when I first got into the industry, I pitched my show to the Huffington Post, MSN, AOL, and I had that first meeting and I was so, so nervous, but they picked it up and they said yes, because I was just so passionate about it. And I think passion like you have is really oh, yeah. important to succeed in this industry because people will give you a chance if they see that passion. Fast forward to Titletown High. Let's talk about the show and why did you want to create this? Well, from two days when we did that with MTV, we had Rush Probst, he was the character there, the main character. And Rush and I had always talked about when the time was right to do another similar series. So when he took the head coaching job at Valdosta, my buddy Brian sent me a text that, hey, Rush just got hired by Valdosta. Valdosta is the winningest high school football program in the country third winning, is, uh, winning football team on any level, college, high school, or pro. So you take a team like that, that now is on the decline. They hadn't won a lot, they weren't doing good, and they wanted to get back on the national stage. So who do they hire? They bring a guy in like Rush Probst. So you take Rush Probst, you take Valdosta, and you put them together, and it's just a recipe for success. Mm -hmm. And let, let's talk about some of the characters on the show. I know they're in high school. So let's talk about the pressures they face. Who are these characters? And I know, and they're also in college football. So let, let's talk about these characters. Sure, so I think we had a great cast, starting obviously with Jake Garcia, who was a kid from California and the state of California shut down last year and was not allowing kids to play football. And he was somebody that was very highly recruited and he has all these colleges telling him, hey, you have to play football this year. So his parents did what they needed to do to find a school for him to play. They decided they wanted their son to come play for Rush Probes. He is known as being an offensive kind of mind, and he has, I think, over 250 Division I 
uh, athletes that he sent to college. And so obviously he has the proof of his ability to coach players at a high level. And Jake Garcia was a phenomenal player, came in to uh, Valdosta. The very first game, they had to come back from behind and win that game. And unfortunately, after that, he got ruled ineligible by the State Athletic Association, which in a rule that really wasn't even a rule that they kind of made up at the time and and really was unfortunate. And we tell, obviously, that story in our show. Then you have a kid like Grayson, who's born and raised in Valdosta, always wanted to be a Wildcat, always wanted to play football at Valdosta High School, is really good. Uh, at Valdosta, a lot of 10th graders don't play, and he he was only in 10th grade last year when we filmed this series. And so he had a lot that he was balancing that we liked. He was balancing trying to make the team and start, but then he also had his love triangle, as we call it, with Lindley and Zoe and, and kind of the issues that he was dealing with there, which obviously... Uh, that that story um, was was unique, let's say. Uh, I think a, a lot of people can relate to maybe dating one person, but still having feelings for somebody else. And so I think that's what you saw with Grayson. Uh, phenomenal athlete. I think he's been really good at college. Um, Amari Jones, he was the quarterback that took over for Jake. Amari was the starter when Jake came in. And so Amari was upset because he had worked hard and then here comes this kid from California and he's just that good. It, it wasn't even a competition. And so Amari too, his story is about him taking over that number one spot and balancing a girlfriend that is demanding a lot of his time. His girlfriend Morgan felt like she should come first and at times even before football. And so that obviously caused a huge conflict with not only Amari, his mom, but also the coaching staff because the coaches felt like Amari wasn't playing up to his potential. So that's kind of the main cast. Obviously, we had some other sub characters within the show, but that was our main cast. Mm -hmm. And this show has gotten a lot of buzz. I did see on Instagram that g Easy and Demi Lovato showed some love for you guys. So let's talk about that. How does it feel? Because I'm sure this has been a very lengthy process getting a show on Netflix, right? <laughs> Oh, for sure. And Netflix has been a huge platform for us and they've been a great partner. And and like you said, honestly, I was hoping the show was going to do good, but I didn't expect the buzz and the press that we've been getting. We were the number two most popular unscripted show in the world last week. Like you said, Jeezy, Demi Lovato, Jimmy Allen, Lanco, a lot of different celebrities um, and athletes are watching the show and commenting on the show. And so for us, obviously, it helps give us um, a, a good kind of pat on the back that what we did uh, is a good series because we really felt good about it. But when you start getting, you know, a wide audience watching the show and then you start getting celebrities reaching out to us, DMing us and also posting about the show, the, the response has been far more than we ever imagined. Mm -hmm. And what's the process been like producing and directing this show? Because I'm sure it, it's, it's a pretty uh, lengthy process, right? So let's talk about that experience so far. Yeah, it is. Anytime you produce and direct, it's a lot. It's a handful for sure, because you're in charge of everything, obviously, with the series, show running the series, whether it's budgets and hiring and, and all those kinds of things. And then you're also responsible for the the day to day shots and every scene and how it's shot and things like that. For me, what I've always done is surrounded myself with the best team possible. We had a phenomenal cinematographer, um, Ikro Godoy, who's done a ton of my projects. We had really good supervising producer and a guy named James Greco who had a lot of experience. We had a, a great team of people from you know myself to the production manager to everybody on our team. We've done so many of these shows that we really are our own team. And so when, when I have the responsibility of producing and directing, I'm only able to do that because of the team that surrounds me. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite sayings is teamwork makes the dream work, right? It really does. <laughs> Having yeah. a great team really, really helps the process. So I can, and, and honestly, the shots and the whole show is so well done, by the way. So I really commend you on creating such a fabulous show. I'm sure everyone wants to know, all our viewers, is, you know, how do you get a show on Netflix? What was the process like? Sure. So the process is very similar to any network, which is, the first thing to do is define the story and the subjects that you, you want to tell the story on. Um, and from there you go in, you spend a few days with them, and then you shoot what's called a sizzle, which is about a five minute kind of highlight reel of what this series could look like. And, and myself, I'm represented by CAA, Creative Artist Agency, and so we work with our agency to, to kind of pitch the series to different networks. 
and then different networks kind of give you their opinion for every yes you get 10 no's so mm -hmm. that's as i was saying before you got to have thick skin but you take that sizzle uh pitch it to networks and then you start having conversations every network wants the show to be a little different and so with us we were lucky that netflix not only were the best partner for us but they had the same kind of mindset of what we wanted the show to be mm -hmm. And, you know, for our viewers that want to get into the entertainment industry or, you know, just succeed in this industry in any category, what advice would you have? Because you've been obviously very successful. You've worked at such big networks. Now you have a Netflix show. And, you know, so what advice would you have for them just getting in? And um, yeah. I think getting in is, is doing the hard work is one thing that I did in my career is is there's not a job on a production that I haven't done. And I think that was huge. And. I was told that early on, hey, make sure you don't just know how to produce, you know how to run camera, you know how to do audio, you know how to be an associate producer, you know how to pull cables. Um, because sometimes on some shows to get them started, I, I remember with Two Days and with Titletown High, actually, for the first few weeks, it was me and three other guys. You know, and then Netflix picks it up and now we have a team of 30 people doing it. But early on, it was just us. And so I think if you're really passionate about a project, it's really important to know how to do many different jobs and do what it takes to get your work out there. Um, don't be scared of hearing the word no. Like I said, I, I've heard the word no 10 times to the amount of yeses that I've heard, but that one yes just makes it all pay off. And if you're truly passionate about something, do whatever it takes. Uh, ask friends to help you, ask different relationships to help you, get a sizzle made and get it out there. And if you can't get to the networks, you can reach out to producers like myself. There's a lot of producers out there that would be more than willing to help people um, look, I, I needed help at the beginning of my career, and I'd love when uh, young producers reach out to me and ask for advice. I'm more than willing to talk to them on the phone or text with them and, and try and help them and steer them in the best direction that I can. But at the end of the day, it's just don't give up. Don't give up because one person told you no, because that may be the next big hit show. Two Days was, was that show for me. That was my very first series, and nobody thought it was going to do anything special and ends up becoming MTV's number one series. Yeah. I think that's such great advice because it's so true. So many people in this industry, you know, they're all excited after college, they get into the industry and they get the repeated no's, right? They get no, no, no. And a lot of them give up. Most people give up after that. And they say, you know what, this industry is not for me. It's too difficult, but it's the ones that persevere, keep going out there, keep trying. As you said, wearing different hats. You know, I know when I got into this industry, I just wanted to be on TV. But now, <laughs> fast forward, I can produce, I can write, I could pitch shows, I could do it all. Exactly. And, you know, you kind of learn the skills when you're, you're so passionate about making it happen. You, you learn these skills and that's really what helps you to succeed in this industry. So I completely agree. And I think, I thank you for sharing that because I think it's really important for people to know that, you know, before getting into yeah. this industry. So my next question is what's next for you? Do you see yourself uh, maybe producing the next hit movie? <laughs> Uh, movies have been talked about uh, within our company. There's uh, two or three different series that we're really excited about right now. There's one that hopefully we can announce soon, the partnership that we have. Um, it's not in the sports world. This is something that's a little outside of our box, but it's a series that we've been developing for a couple years now um, and excited uh, about who we're partnering with. Uh, I think it's gonna make a lot of noise in a lot of ways and it's gonna be a really good series. Um, and then we have some other ser series that are similar to kind of the title town. We have one on cheerleading. Uh, we have another one that we're looking into on uh, basketball, high school and college basketball. And so for us, our our next few months looks looks pretty busy, which I'm, I'm so thankful for. Obviously in, in today's world, you just never know what you're gonna get. And we've been very fortunate uh, um, to have some great opportunities ahead of us. Amazing, Jason, congratulations on everything on Tuttle Town High. It's a, a great series. And yeah, we're, we're excited to see your next projects and we hope to have you back on the show soon. Yeah, I'd love to come back. I'm a big fan of yours and your show and love what you're doing. And so thanks for having me on and, and appreciate all the love. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.